guys, Essie K, the homesteader here. All right, you guys, Essie K is in the kitchen today. And what we're going to be doing today, well, what rather what I'm going to be showing you guys what to do or how to make is bee pollen and propolis soap. Yes, you guys heard me right. So what you're going to need is some melt and pour and actually melt and pour soap is one of the easiest soaps that you can possibly make so i'm going to actually be using goat milk soap okay so you're going to need whatever melt and pour that you choose you may want to choose something olive oil based you may want to choose something with butter bases um there is a slew of melt and pour soaps that you can use okay so i'm going to use goat milk soap but the two main ingredients is going to be bee pollen and bee propolis. All right, you guys? So you can buy bee pollen pretty much anywhere, especially um, natural stores that um, focus on natural remedies. You can buy bee pollen there. You can buy bee pollen in the supermarket. It's usually in the baking aisle. You can also by um, Propopolis, Google it. It's probably right there in your store. You just don't know it's there, okay? So, also, what I'm gonna be using is, as far as fragrances, I'm gonna be using my Brambleberry, Saffron and Honey, and my other Brambleberry, Pure Honey. And these smell so, so good, all right, you guys? So, you, what you wanna start off, if you're gonna do melt and pour, you want to start off with your cubes, dice them up. You want to do a double boil. You can also use your microwave if you want to melt it that way. You can do it that way as well. So what I'm going to do, and I'm also going to actually add some color. I'm going to be using natural mica. This is a pretty, pretty golden color. And so what I'm going to start to do now is melt my melt and pour down. So my stove is on low, but I'm actually going to turn it down because this water is already nice and hot. And I'm just going to stick that in there like so. And it's going to melt it down. And yes, it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to melt it down very nicely. So as it melts down, I'm going to be adding some more cubes because I have... Okay, don't forget. Let's back up. You're going to need your molds. If you want to use your wooden molds, you can use wooden molds. I do both, but I just love these kind of molds because they make the soap look so pretty. So, so if you have the wooden mold, you can use that too. If you like to cut your soaps up, you can do that too. So, as this is melting down, let's talk about let's talk about the benefits of the pollen soap. Now, bee pollen is full of nutrients. Propolis is full of nutrients so in my household we actually um take bee pollen as the vitamin because this is all vitamins here all right and some people may say bee bread that's what it is is bee bread bee pollen so you can take a spoonful of that and get you some vitamin d if you can't get out there and get the vitamin d for the sun all right so let's talk about the benefits of the bread of the bees and let me show y'all this book this book i love this book um, I use this book with pretty much all my products that I make that I sell off the lawn. This is a wonderful book to have. And this also is a wonderful book to have if you're into essential oils, which we should be. All of us should be. You should be building your medicine cabinet full of essential um, oils, okay? So that's an excellent book, too. So let's talk about the bee pollen. Wait a minute. You guys, I should have got my glasses, but I think I could do this. I think I can do this. All right. The bread of the bees. And yes, this is melting down. So let me keep an eye on that. I'm going to keep that on low because it is hot. Pollen is a masculine essence that fertilizes a plant's ovum. The pollen sold in the stores is a mix of many different pollens from a wide variety of flowers. Bees mix tiny particles of the plant pollen with secretions that they produce in order to create the small granules that you find in packages at the grocery store. Pollen soap is one of my favorites. It is a, a soap that gives the best results when used regularly. It is best characteristic 
is the beneficial action it has on acne prone skin thanks to the concentration of the keratin, which the body transforms into vitamin A. Pollen also contains vitamin B, C, D, and K, as well as minerals and amino acids. All right, you guys, y'all hear that? Okay. The applications for pollen and cosmetics are exceptional thanks to its rich composition. In addition to being beneficial for acne, it is also potent revitalizer, making it equally helpful for undernourished and wrinkled skin. When buying pollen, consider several factors. It should be fresh. When pollen is more than a year old, it loses almost 80% of its healthful properties. Remember that, you guys. And its expiration date should not be coming up soon. In addition, it should be various colors, including yellow, orange, purple, and black. Fresh pollen dissolves easily in your mouth or in plain water. There are two ways to add pollen to soap. It is original. And it, in its original granulated form or ground using a coffee grinder. All right, you guys. So there's another page. Okay, this is popping, so let me turn that down some. All right. Yeah, I'm making a mess. All right, so let's talk about the pollens um, action to the skin. I love this book. You guys need to get this book. Pollen soap indi indicated for everyone who has problems with acne or oily skin. I have oily skin. For skin with large pores and blackheads. And for mature skin with premature wrinkles. The biggest virtue of pollen soap is that it nourishes the skin. I do not recommend this soap for people who are allergic to pollen. And we all know there are a lot of people that is allergic to pollen and also that are allergic to bees. All right, you guys? So when you are preparing any type of your soaps make sure that no one is allergic to those ingredients that you may add in your soap okay so nobody in my household is allergic to uh bee pollen or propolis okay so this is melting now nice so we're gonna let that keep doing what it's doing all right you guys so let that keep melting down and I'm probably going to bring you guys back because it is taking its time, but it is melting. So let's talk about the propolis soap. Okay. And I did not, this is in the book. I did not write this stuff, you guys. Okay. So the propolis soap. Propolis is a resonate, resinous compound that bees produce from a substance that they obtain from the buds and the bark of some trees, such as cork, pine, or oak. They use it to cover honeycomb panel, panels and, is, and protects the hive and its residents from fungi, parasites, and bacteria. That's great to know. The substance, which is hard and brownish, acts as a natural fungicide and insecticide. Propolis has been used since since the times of Egyptians, when, in, when ingested, it has a magnificent protective power against colds, bronchitis, and infections. Y'all hear that? More than 20 health enhancing qualities of propolis have been recognized and tested, including antibiotics, antifungal, anti-inflammation, uh, aller allergic, and aesthetic and healing properties. Propolis also helps from scar tissue. When used externally, it gives unsurpassable results fighting ulcers, hemorrhoids, burns, and warts. Y'all better get this in your house. It can be found in a capsule powder and syrup form. Yes, they do have it in capsule form as well. And if you buy the powder, you can make your own capsules. For this soap, I recommend using a semi-liquid form. It comes in a dark glass, which ensures all of its properties are maintained. Propolis contains 30% beeswax, but we will also add amount of beeswax specified in the ingredient listed to our soap. I will not, we will not be doing that. I will just be adding propolis. This formula is a bit special precisely because of the presence of the propolis. After a few months, all soaps tend to dry out a bit and they sometimes shrink, but they do not lose any of its virtue. However, propolis soap will stay as it is as is for a few years 
looking just like it did the first day you made it. Y'all heard that? So let me show y'all this book again because y'all might want to try to snapshot it. All right, you guys. So let's get back over here with this melting, um, melting pour. So it is melting. Let me lift it up a little bit so you guys can see that. It is melting, but it is taking its time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back when it's all melted up. And then we're going to start adding our ingredients. And as it melts down, you can add more of these cubes. And actually, I am doing about 32 ounces. This is a 32-ounce cup. So that's what I'm going to shoot for because I think my molds are four ounce each. So that's what I think I'm going to shoot for. And I might be left with a little bit over, but that's okay. All right, you guys. So let me get this melted down. And then I will come back to you guys. And we will add all the ingredients in the melt and pour goat milk soap. And then we'll come back on another uh, another clip, and I'll show you after they set, and we will pop them out. All right, you guys? So let me come back to you guys after this is all melted up, and then we'll add the ingredients. All right, you guys, I am back and all melted up. All right, you guys, so what I did was I melted it down, and I made two um glassfuls or pyrex full of melting pour so that i can do each one separate so we're going to do the bee pollen first and we're going to add what's this oh table this is a tablespoon you can add as much or as little as you want this is not going to harm you if you add more than you're supposed to okay you guys so that is the bee pollen. And when I tell you, this stuff smells so good. And we're giving that a good mix. And you do not have to mix this all the way until it dissolves. You do not have to do that. And actually, it's going to look really nice without it being all the way dissolved. Okay. So now we're going to add just a little bit of mica. Not much. Probably a half a um, teaspoon. And then I'm gonna actually add saffron and honey to this. And we're gonna do probably two, I mean, one teaspoon full. This smells so good. And you can add this to your preference. If you are doing, doing it from scratch with lye, you can actually go online or if you have a lye calculator, you can figure it out that way. I want to show you guys easy things to do. And I know I mentioned that I will show you guys how to make um, soap from scratch with lye. And I will do my best to get to that. But right now, I want to do what's easy peasy. And also, I wanted to tell you guys, because I don't think I showed it to you guys. You can buy melt and pour all different types of bases. This is a five-pound block. You can buy a 25-pound block. You can buy a 50 pound block, and I'm gonna tell you guys something. You might want to do that and store it up because you might not have time to make soap. You understand what I'm saying? So, if you could get a couple of blocks of those 25, 50, and 100 pounds, you need to get it because I have, I have those stored up too because you might not be able to make any soap from scratch. You understand what I'm saying? So, at least you will have soap. All right, SEK note, get you a block, all right? So we're going to start over here with the melt and pour and the molds. This is my rule. Oh, let me show y'all the color. Y'all see how pretty that is? And you can see the granulas is in there. They're not fully melted. They don't have to be fully melted. And this is not going to take a long time to set. You can actually put them in your freezer and let them set. That's probably what I'll do and just pop them right back out. You can let them set in your refrigerator or you could just let them set overnight. Melt and pour don't take no time to set. Okay. We actually have enough 
I bought out another mold. Looks so pretty. And if you want to add other um, ingredients to this, you can. You can actually add some oatmeal. If you want to do that, you can. Yes, you can. If you want to add some honey to it, you can do that as well. Get some little granules, get at the bottom. And by it not being um, dissolved all the way, it's going to give the soap a nice look. Okay, so that is the bee pollen. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use some, a half a um, teaspoon of mica for some coloring. And we're gonna put a tablespoon of the propolis in. And this is the powder form. That's actually a little bit more, but that's okay. No less, no more is gonna harm you. Okay, we're gonna give that a good stir. And this is actually turning into like a cocoa brown look, like a hot chocolate from the Propopolis as well. It looked like chocolate milk. Remember I told y'all, easy peasy. If you get you a block, you can make all melting pour to your liking. If you started from scratch with lye, you're gonna have to follow each and every one of those directions and uh, measurements, okay? Cause uh, soap from scratch is very precise. You have to be extremely precise when you, when you are dealing with lye. That's why I like the melt and pour so much, cause you can you can make it to your um, liking, your specification. Move that out some more. This look like chocolate. All right, get over here, melt and pour. This look like chocolate. Chocolate ice cream with some cookie crumbs. That's what this look like. Two more. You want to get all that goodness out because the pollen and the propolis tend to go to the bottom. So make sure you use a good spatula and get all that goodness out. All right, you guys. Y'all see how easy that was? Melt and pour. Easy peasy. So I'm going to let these set and I'm going to come back to you guys after they set and we're going to pop them out. And you know something, you guys? I think I forgot to use the other fragrance, but that's okay because it still has a nice fragrance because it's a melting pour and the actual goat milk, smel goat milk smells like a, a coconut. It smells like a coconut. So that's not a problem. All right, you guys. So what we'll do... What, well, what I will do is come back after these cool down and we will pop them out and see how beautiful they look. And then I can't wait. I know my sons, they'll be, they'll be coming to visit. When they come visit, they ransack my coupon stockpile. <laughs> so when they come, they can take some homemade soap. They love my homemade butters and stuff like that, body butters and things. So yeah, when they come over, they come to shop. So I don't just coupon for myself or make these things for myself. I make them for my children and also my salon. But when I make it for my salon, I am more precise. I am more being more sanitary with gloves because I sell it. But right now I'm just doing this for fun and making it for my family and friends. So all right, you guys, I'm going to come back after these cool off and we're going to pop them out to see how beautiful they came out. All right. All right, you guys, so now it is time to unmold our bee pollen and bee propolis goat milk soap. All right, you guys, so let me show you what it's looking like. It has hardened up very nicely, and it almost looked like, it looked like a chocolate brownie. 
and kind of like a look like vanilla pudding kind of color so it's looking really nice so after your soap has set you can unmold oh man this looks really nice you guys hold on a second oh really nice Okay, you guys, this is what it's looking like. Y'all see that? So this one is the Propopolis, and this one is the Bee Pollen. Came out really nice. Y'all see that? All right, nutrients, 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 you guys. I'm gonna put these over here, put those there. Very nice. So I cannot wait to use these. And remember what I told you guys, make sure that your family members are not allergic to any of these types of soap or any soap that you even try to make, okay? Make sure nobody's allergic because people are allergic to all kinds of um, different things and fragrances too. So even though I didn't put the fragrance in uh, the Propopolis one, that's okay because the goat milk has a coconut smell to it and it smells, it still smells good. And this will work fine if somebody is allergic to uh, fragrance. And you do have a lot of people that buy no fragrance soaps all the time, all the time. So this is what it's looking like you guys nice all right you guys so i really really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to make bee pollen and bee propopolis soup all right you guys so if you try it make sure you leave a comment let me know how it worked out for you guys and remember i told y'all this is easy peasy this is a melt and pour they say mp for melt and pour so this is definitely a very easy um recipe no exact measurements necessary uh when it comes to making lye i mean sorry making soap from scratch with lye you have to be very precise and you have to follow the calculator okay we will get there but y'all know essie's all about easy peasy right all right you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you thumbs up make sure you like subscribe and make sure you share and if you try this, make sure you comment below. If you ever tried it, make sure you comment below. But I definitely look forward to um, using these soaps. Uh, I do have two sons that have um, very sensitive skin, so this will work fine for them. So again, thank you so much for tuning in to SEK Homestead Journey. And I am still on this journey, and I'm so glad you all are on this journey with me. Until the next time, I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.